So for today's YouTube video, man, we're taking a look at the number one tip video going around in Warzone right now. That is the worst aiming mistakes you make on Call of Duty. Me and Dante, we're going to give our opinions. This has almost like 400k views. So everyone, this is highly requested, man. I'm excited to react. All right, this is done by the boy Dream Strike. Let's check it out. Dream Strike. Aiming in Warzone is hard. <laughs> you have to track enemies up close, track them far away, switch between multiple targets, Flick on the enemies, Ooh. center in the correct places. It's mm. probably the most important skill to have because as useful as advanced movement is, you can't slide cancel your enemies to death. That is true. Yo, you gonna shoot him? You gonna shoot him? <laughs> you get a gun and shoot, shoot people. Oh my god. <laughs> and a big part of why aiming is so hard oh. is you have to find the right controller settings or sensitivities. Your sensitivity basically controls how responsive your crosshair is when you move your thumbstick. At higher sensitivities, yeah. you can move your aim faster, but it's going to be more difficult to control. It's kind of like driving a sports car. It might seem fun to go just really fast. Just watched that the other day. Yeah, we just watched Tokyo Drift. It's very easy to lose control. <laughs> so finding the right sensitivity is about navigating this balance. How important do you think sensitivity is in as far as? Very important. That's probably one of the first, like most of like asked questions, like, yo, what's like the sensitivity? Like what sensitivity do you rock? I started off, I looked up what like pros use and then I kind of just made my adjustments. I honestly there. think that question to other people is kind of pointless because everybody has their certain preference. If you go and ask somebody, oh, what what uh, what do you think the best sensitivity is? And they go, oh, 2020. You try and play on 2020, you're not gonna do as well. Yeah, but as the best of the best players don't run 2020. Yeah, that is a lot, dude. That There's so many <laughs> yeah, different that's all possible combinations to be, to be that if you try to do the math with how many there are, your head might actually explode. Yeah, I don't, we don't even care, but I don't even look into that. And if you search the internet for help, many people claim to have the best settings, but each video recommends something different. Exactly what I was and just talking about. 2020, I go 9977 seven sensitivity. So how do you know which ones are actually the best? <laughs> dude. It becomes very easy to get trapped in an endless loop, changing your sensitivity settings over and over again every time you lose a gunfight. And even after you're done playing for the night, you find yourself still thinking about the game. Oh, this is a great you hold video. On to some hope that one day you'll find those perfect controller settings and start dropping <laughs> high kill games like the top Warzone players. Oh my god. Well, that might sound familiar to you because that was the situation I found myself in. And it took me a long time to figure this out, but the best settings don't actually exist. You can't just copy someone else's controller sensitivity. I, I, I think to a certain extent. Yeah, I think I think you can definitely like at least get close to mimicking like some of the best players and then you kind of adjust from there, but there's a reason why mm -hmm. some of the best players don't run 3-3 three, three and don't run 2020 you know what i mean like there's always like a, a a balance thing in a sense but there's also universal settings that a lot of people tend to use like tap tap to uh loot or whatever that helps a lot instead of just holding yeah yeah and then a lot of people run uh tap to crouch in case you want to like slide cancel or anything like that expecting to see improvement you have to find the right settings for your gaming setup and for your play style and because i'm a nerd i came up with a way to test my controller settings to see if they were any good but more on that in a minute. Because first, you have to understand that there's really two reasons why you can't just copy some of the settings. This editing. Let's break it down. The first reason is that all controllers are different. Yeah, that's Even what I was saying. Even identical. When anything is made or manufactured, there are slight differences from one part to the next. So the analog sticks in one controller might feel looser or tighter compared to an identical controller. Yeah, I run a Scuff Impact. You don't even you rock up. I run the Pro, and I guarantee it's like it feels different as far as sensitivity on those two controllers. So, so, so it definitely is controller based for sure, in my opinion, on that part. Looser analog sticks will make you feel like you're playing on a higher sensitivity than what you actually are, and the differences can also be more extreme. Some players prefer to use taller thumbsticks. Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's legit me, bro. That's why I legit use a taller thumbstick on my on my right aiming. So I have like, so I adjust my sensitivity to that. You know what I mean? So. And both these things will drastically change the feel of your aim because for a given force exerted by your thumb, the torque will be that's higher. Yeah, that, that was too much. Shut up, nerd. Yeah. <laughs> the science isn't really important. What is important is that every controller is different. And now for the other factor. I thought he was gonna go into the math and all that. <laughs> or, well, actually your thumb. Just like any other skill, some people will be able to control their aim at higher sensitivities better than others naturally. 
or because they have more time to devote to improving their skill. Oh, something that was a which beam. no gamer has done before. Some people also like to play more That's aggressive. Grass. <laughs> they might gravitate towards a higher sensitivity, <laughs> while others like to play more tactical, so a lower sense may be better for them. Yep. The important thing is that we're all different and play different, so you have to find the right sense for you. But how do we do that? Well, we practice our centering. Now, I feel like centering is this mystical word that the top players talk about, but it's widely misunderstood within the COD community. And this is partially due to people having slightly different definitions of the word. But the easiest way to think about it is that it's your crosshair placement while you aren't aimed down sight. Players with good centering anticipate where their opponents will be and place their crosshair in those locations yeah. in your chest to head Wow, level. I never even thought this about that, but I just do that naturally. This spent adjusting their aim when yeah. the opponent actually that's appears. Quick, that's what Quicksilver do. And it allows yeah. them to start hitting shots as soon as possible. Really good. Now, on the other hand, players with bad centering have to spend critical time in a gunfight moving their crosshair to the enemy before yeah. they can land any bullets. They typically aim at the ground or sky when running around the map, which really doesn't make any sense because an enemy isn't going to that's appear why, from either of those locations. That's why I'll sit there and like, I'll be so slide canceling, but I'll be like pre-aiming a certain spot, like just back, just cause I'm anticipating someone to peek it like. Mm -hmm. And if they do, well, it's a hacker. <laughs> the thing is, when it comes to aim, flicking and tracking get all the attention, but centering is actually what's most important in Warzone Jesus, because the time kill is so yeah, low. What? The, the person hell? who hits the first bullet usually wins the gunfight. And I know Usually. you might be saying, what are you going on and on about? Centering is easy. Well, you just don't get it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's no hassle. I used to think this too. I've never even good seen centering that movie. is actually oh my really God, difficult. It's a classic, because if you bro. watch any good player play, they're constantly moving around the map and Beyonce making micro adjustments it. to their aim mm -hmm. to keep their yeah. centering on target. And these adjustments get even harder shit with the more advanced <laughs> movements that are used. And also, there's oftentimes situations during the game where enemies may appear from multiple locations. Yep. And this means that good players are switching their aim between several targets yep. based on their positioning and the probability of where they think an enemy most likely will appear. So to have great centering, you really need great aim control. And your ability to control your aim is tied directly to... Anyone? Anyone? Um, <laughs> movement. No, <laughs> get out of here. Don't you remember that chart from earlier? It's your sensitivity settings. So what this means is that we can find our best sensitivity settings by using our centering. I recently had the urge to change my settings and here's what I did to test them. The first thing I knew I needed to do was to find the maximum sensitivity I could use while still having good centering. So I started by creating yeah. a custom game in Modern for Warfare me it's Multiplayer. Nine. I then made up an imaginary path and picked several targets along that path where I thought enemies could appear. I started with a sensitivity of 6-6 and the goal was simple. To run back and forth on the path, centering to each target, and to slowly raise my sensitivity until my aim started to become really inconsistent. And here's what that looked like. What a great video. 6-6 yeah, six, six is almost too slow for me. Plays on six, six. Right. I gave myself as much time as necessary to get adjusted to each sensitivity and then watch back a recording before making any adjustments. If my centering was controlled and accurate, I bumped up to the next sensitivity. And if it wasn't, I knew I was at my maximum. If you're struggling to find a good starting sensitivity, I linked a spreadsheet in the description below with 20 different pro Warzone player settings. But hold that's up, my sensitivity, did you see that? Nine, nine. Let's take a closer look at my aim right there. Now it was subtle, so you're gonna have to take a pretty close look. But when I got to nine, I couldn't stop myself from overshooting or undershooting the targets. Let us know in the comments below what sensitivity you guys play on. Yeah, this is a great editing piece right here. Like for me, I run nine nine, and I think I'm really used to it now. I can control it because of like this analog stick. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to playing with. Like this allows me to like not move my analog stick so like fuck so I, much. I preach a lot that control freaks are like. A lifesaver. Like, if I were to take off my control freak, oh, I'd feel like a bot. I, I wouldn't be able to play. My aim would be a bot, dude. Yeah, and if you haven't tried control freaks, I, I suggest you try them and give them give them a chance. I, at first, it might feel weird, but after like a couple of hours and maybe a couple I've days, I've been using them for bro. I've been using them for like six, seven yeah, years. You won't be able to live without them. And if you compare that to eight, you can see that my aim was much more deliberate and controlled. 
And what this told me is that I really shouldn't go past eight unless I want to dedicate the time to practice my centering at yeah. that higher sensitivity. Now, I typically do this test a few times to if get the best result. If you're an average Call of Duty player, you, you shouldn't go setting, above eight. I actually you dial should. it back a bit because when I get into an actual game, there's so many things going on that I can't focus 100% of my attention on my aim like during the exercise. I need to play on a sensitivity oh that I don't have to worry about. Ooh. And for me, it's like, you seven, demon. Seven. But the main reason I'm sharing move. this test with you is to help you avoid the mistake that I made early on. I fell into the Warzone YouTube TikTok trap trying to play at a higher sensitivity because it looked cool and not for any practical reasons. But this stopped me from getting better and led me to lose a lot of gunfights. I had to figure out that there's nothing wrong with playing at a lower sensitivity. Obviously, you still need to be able to react to getting shot in the back, so I probably wouldn't ever go below four, but I would always recommend to prioritize your aiming control over speed and war zone. And now that we've got our sensitivity dialed in, we should be ready to go now, right? <laughs> well, not quite. Nope. <laughs> In a gunfight, good centering so only gets funny, you so right far. Right, we're enemies good, right? don't stand in one place. Mm. Okay, well, most enemies. So you'll also need to have good tracking. And this is where the ADS multiplier comes into play. As his you name play is on one. I can't play on one, bro. I don't I don't even know. I play on one. You play I, on I thought one. I play on point nine. I play on point like eight five. Really? Yeah, I haven't yeah. touched it. Ever since that setting came out, I haven't messed with any Flies, of these. When you aim down sight, this multiplier kicks in and adjusts your sensitivity by its value. So if you're playing on 1010 with a 0.8 multiplier, when you ADS, your sensitivity becomes eight. Really? Now to find the right value, what? you really need to get into a lot of gunfights. And you can do this a few different ways, like using bots in a custom game or dropping into hot spots like prison on rebirth. Oh, great but the landing. best option that I've is to get a friend and drop into plunder or a custom game on modern warfare. And what you want to do is have your friends strafe back and forth at different distances yeah, think about it, while you bro. practice tracking when the you're, movement. When you're free running, right? You want to be able to move move faster than when you're aiming in and trying to get that precise aim. So when you're running a 10-10 with a 1.0, you're moving just as fast as you're free running while trying to aim down sights. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on you know what I'm saying? your head? Hey, motherfuckers still get fried though, no Yeah, care. facts. And then once you get comfortable with that, have your friends start I just using never, dance I've never movements even touched like this. slide canceling and bunny hopping. And then through trial and error, you want to adjust your ADS multiplier until your tracking feels really consistent. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is a lot of people like not that's so good of players. They'll be just running, but not pre-aiming anything or like centering on anything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they always usually lose it because of someone peaks. That's why when you're a good player, people always ask, why do you guys just slide cancel all the time? Like, why are you running on the map? Just slide canceling. Why? Why? You were just like trying to stay active. It, you know, it, what I mean? it's it's easier for people to hit just a running object than someone sliding and jumping and all that. So. Yeah. If you can if you can dodge a couple bullets when you're running around the map do your eyes go different directions of on course your... yeah i'm always looking at different things as far as like where people are peeking but a lot of times i'm on the mini map trying to see like where everyone's at but yeah usually if i'm in a, like a city i'm always looking like every looking different windows ev and shit. everywhere bro. even if ev your character's running straight yeah i'm, I'm looking, looking here, yeah i'm looking, looking everywhere yeah. yeah if you take away one thing from this video it's that centering helps you find your best controller sensitivity and tracking helps you dial in your ads multiplier now, I don't change my controller settings that often because muscle memory plays a big part in aiming consistency, but when I do need to change them because I've gotten a new controller or because, well, I feel the need, the need for speed. I make sure to change them for the right reasons. And that's all I have for you today. If you want to practice your aim, even video, more, make sure you guys drop a like. Try to get 10,000 likes on this. This is a great video. I love his videos. Oh.